Hey, y'all, Billy from Permapastures Farm. You want to learn to prune like a pro? Well, I'm going to show you how you can get that knowledge, okay? And you want to stick around for that. But today, it's an overcast sky, but it's still a day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it, especially when I'm out here doing the things I absolutely love, which is going to be pruning. I'm going to be pruning this whole area. This is the area that is the emerging food forest. Well, let me take that back. It's going to be an emerging orchard. Doesn't look wonderful right now, but it started in a very awful place. We had thorns, thickets, briars, multiflora rows, you name it, as tall as this Bartlett pear over here, okay? And we had the pigs go through, they wiped it out. Then after that, we came in, pulled out what the pigs didn't, and because it was somewhere near around summer, we went ahead and put buckwheat, cowpea all through here. So the unfriendly weed regimes couldn't come back. Well, that's a whole nother story altogether. So my goal today is to prune as much of this stuff as I possibly can. But I'm also gonna show you some pretty cool tricks in what we use and how we go about it. Now this is a Bartlett pear, and if anybody stuck around before, here's what makes this thing special. There was I think four of them that I got on a discount rack, I, I want to say five bucks. And frankly, I got the idea from my pastor, the homesteading pastor, about what he and his wife did. So I think, I don't know, maybe I spent five bucks. I can't remember what it was. But these guys were on the way to the dumpster. So I picked them up, brought them back here. They weren't wonderful. And frankly, they still don't look great. But they might have been about yay tall when I first got them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do with some heavily... I'm gonna heavily prune and train these trees, but that's not the big thing today. Here's what I wanna point out. When I was talking about the orchard down there or the food forest, I was showing you what I do. Well, in the past, I used to be really, really good at explaining the origin, my origin story in all things, okay? And whether it had to be, whether it was Greg Judy, whether it was Joel Salatin, whether it was Jeff Lawton, whether it was Stefan Subkoviak, all these people, I have gotten enormous not pieces of knowledge from them. So when I want to learn something, I go to the very best on the planet. Well, the best I know how to go to when it comes to permaculture orchard is Stefan Subkoviak, hero of mine. And honestly, on my short list of all the people on this planet I truly want to meet, he is definitely in the top five. So hopefully one of these days I can make my way up to Canada and go meet this wonderful hero of mine, okay? And... So that brings me into what exactly I'm going to be doing today. Like I said, pruning. You can learn from me, but I'm telling you to go learn from him. And you can do it because I've done it. Um, first of all, go out there. If you haven't seen it, I don't, I don't know what it costs. I don't get anything for it. Go get the Permaculture Orchard Beyond Organic video. And it showcases him and his methods. But since that time, he's come out with his own pruning video and a virtual tour of his place, which if you have any interest in this stuff, don't look at me, look at him. Because everything I know in so many different ways, I got from him and you can get it. We're gonna leave those links down below. And honestly, if you want any of this knowledge, it is freely given, well, not freely, you're gonna to have to pay for it, but it's worth every single penny. I get nothing for it for promoting it. I'm just telling you. You can learn from me, or you can learn from the guy I learned from, and it's available out there. So we'll leave those links down below. So I'm not gonna be covering, I'm gonna prune this tree. I'm gonna train it, but I told you where you need to go to go get that knowledge yourself and learn from the very best. We've covered it in the past, but why not lead you to the person that inspired me? That's exactly what we're gonna do. Well, today we're bringing another dog to the hunt, and that's what I'm gonna show you. So I got this Bartlett pear, like I said, it should not have ever survived. This and the other three like it should not have survived. Right now they're thriving and they're gonna need a little TLC. So today I'm gonna to tell you exactly what we're gonna do. I got a bucket full of bull poop, AKA Washington DC, or generally government altogether. And where we got it was from right over here. Coco's in his little uh, makeshift shelter. And uh, we're gonna have big changes over there in the future. But I'm gonna show you some stuff I do, stuff I invented, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna get into the neat meat and potatoes of all this. Okay, so we got the graft unit on this tree about sitting about right here, and there's a reason I got these gloves on. Okay, here's one of the things I do. 
Now, let me just back up a little bit. The mulch ring on this tree, I swear, was a foot high. And because the soil is becoming more and more alive, we had cardboard, we had everything down here. It's all gone. This stuff was a, the most jacked up soil you can imagine. And here it is coming around. Here's an old bull patty that we just throw over here. Now, you don't have to do this, but I do. I got all this extra cardboard from all the things that come in. I'm gonna show you a little method I do that I, I think I invented. And it's literally just cutting it like so I'm gonna cut a Y in it and I'm gonna do it just like this okay I don't even have to go back and do this but I'm gonna do it a little calling card for the worms shall we say I'm gonna take that push it through like so kind of roll it up just a little bit and I'm gonna put it around my tree now because I'm in a very 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 steep environment that you can't necessarily see I always make sure that when I do this you can lay a bunch of individual cardboard around here that's fine I do it this way because when the rain and the wind or whatever else comes because we live in such steep terrain I always put this with the opening on the downhill side so if it ever moves it ain't going nowhere okay so let me just take this back off for a second and show you what I'm gonna do in here I got some of that DC and I've been doing this for a long time you can go about this a couple of different ways but you don't have to this is one way I go about it so I take my bull poop if you're going to use raw manure make sure you do not mix this stuff in that is very important so if i'm going to use raw manure like this i'm not going to make sure it's not touching this tree it's not up against the trunk it's a little further away but all it is if you have soil that's alive now this is where i'm taking some of that greg judy knowledge to to task right now or not to task but taking it remember permaculture is a toolbox i'm taking out the tools i need so if you have soil that's halfway alive, believe me, this poop ain't going to be here long. It's going to give a calling card to all the worms, and this is where the gloves come in. So I'm going to go ahead and put some down, just some raw manure. And let me tell you, I don't even have to do this. I could just take it and put it right on top. Now, I got that down, and do not mix that in. Trust me, you do not want to do that. And once again, from what you learned from Subkoviak, Mr. Subkoviak, is nature always puts its fertility on top, okay? That's exactly what I'm doing. I could go ahead and add more manure if I want to. We could do this. I've been doing it forever and a day. Years ago, we did this experiment where we had this stationary chicken coop, and we were taking all the stuff out of that coop, quite literally, taking all the stuff out of that coop and sticking it around the trees that were nearby. We were doing an experiment where we were, I mean, we heavily mulched this thing probably 12 foot in diameter. And I'm not kidding you, it came up that high. And we did that with a number of trees. And then of course there were a number of them that we didn't do it with. Just clean out the chicken tractor, put it on top, let nature take care of it. I kid you not, every single tree we did that to every one to a person without question every single one of those trees not only was more robust more healthy more everything it blew out the competition on the ones that we didn't do it with okay so keep that in mind if you're going to do this sort of thing nature always puts the fertility on top permaculture 101 there's also variations to this now I also have, alongside this driveway you see right here, forget all the junk in the back, we're doing a lot of work around here. Um, I also have compost down there that we made from the chicken tractor on steroids. And I could go ahead and put that on here. So let me go get some of that, I'll be right back and we'll put it on next and I'll show you how we'll finish it up. All right, you'll notice this is some of the stuff, it's, it's rough compost and I don't care. You know, it's just going to be more fungal dominant. So here's this ballin' compost we got from that chicken tractor on steroids, okay? Remember I told you before, the best compost we ever make out here is always the part where we've taken the chickens and make an 18-day Berkeley-style compost pile. Well, that's down there in that other one. This is the stuff before then. And we keep it covered up until we're ready to use it. And I guarantee you, I'm going to use every bit of this 
on all these trees. And it's and this is another dog we're taking to the hunt. I mean, this is Fukuoka, this is Jeff Lawton, this is Elaine Ingham. Y'all, there's a whole lot of inspiration, and this is why we spend a lot of money on education. Why we go literally sometimes around the world to go learn from the world's best. So, going right back to Mr. Subkoviak. He's the cat's meow in so many different ways, y'all. You want to check him out. All right, so we got poop on the bottom, cardboard, and I could go plenty, plenty thick on that cardboard. For those of you in the Deep South, you might want to consider that. Um, I mean, good night. And then here, poking out the sides, I just realized I kind of covered up some of the comfrey root that I have down in there. That's fine, too. Like I said, this is an emerging. We haven't really done a whole lot except stick trees in here. And through this winter and fall, through the fall and winter, we're going to spend more time making this look like that, the stuff you have seen. Okay, so this is our recipe. And, oops, let me get this out of here. This is our recipe. It takes a little time, and I don't care. All right, so more fertility on top. Uh-oh, lost my rubber gloves, but that's okay. So if you look at this, but this is that compost we did. I could have put it down first. In fact, I would if I did nothing more than put the cardboard down, and we have done this, if I did nothing but put the cardboard down and throw mulch on top, and I mean a lot of mulch, I'm money ahead. I'm light years ahead. But this is the method that we've kind of developed, I guess. I don't know. Maybe somebody else has done it before. This is the one that has worked extraordinarily well for us, and you can repeat this as often as you like. And then, like Mr. Subkoviak even teaches, for me, the barometer of how alive my soil is, is that cardboard. When I come back here in a few months, I'll see what's left of it. Because right now, the worms, which didn't exist in here because they put dewormer in, the owners that had this place before us put dewormer in everything. So it killed all the life in the soil. And we're bringing it back. And we're finding out that by partnering with nature, by forgetting this reductionistic worldview nonsense that we've all been raised with, that the closer we move to nature, nature comes back to us 20 times closer. You dig? So here it is. You didn't see any chemicals in here, and we get robust growth of just about everything we need. Okay, so last thing I'm going to do. Take this. Now this is, remember before I talked about before when we were talking about leaves and all this other stuff? And how, as best I can, I want to try to take the fertility from somewhere else and bring it to my place. Greg Judy 101. Well, this bag represents that. So every time I go to town, I bundle, like so many of us, you know, gas prices being what they are, I bundle a bunch of other things at the same time. Well, this is one of them. These wood chips, in the past, I've traded a lot of honey in exchange for wood chips. You know, the honey we got, remember, we're permaculture, so we got plenty of different systems going down here. Well, somebody, people have asked before, can we buy your honey? No, you can't. Because honestly, I make five times more by bartering for that honey, and part of it are these wood chips a lot of times. I've gotten triple, triple ground wood chips, and I, I don't even know if, it may be 50 yards by this point, for about a gallon of honey. Because the, the honey meant more to him than U.S. dollars, or if you even want to think that's worth anything. But anyway, that was worth more to him. So let me go ahead and get another bag of this stuff. Every time we go to town, we go to that little honey hole of ours, get another piece of it. Let me go ahead and put one on that side. Now, going back to this, y'all, remember, we want to pull that stuff. It's basically like a donut laid on its side. You see that? Now, check this out. I'm not doing anything really any different than what I did six months ago. And it was down to the ground. So that's telling you that all the life in that soil, 
Think about all the calling cards I just put in here. We got raw manure, which, by the way, the worms are going to love. They're going to take that. They're just like, oh, shoot, there's a dinner bell. But if you're in a place where you're sitting there throwing about a bunch of dewormer and stuff like that, yeah, you're going to have a problem. But I kid you not, you just take these steps that we're doing right here. This is what we do. These are the methods we've devised, whether it's to cutting the cardboard a certain way, putting the manure down. There's any number of ways. Now, this is done, right? Now, take a look at him right there. He's giving me an amen. So he's in something of a, like a wagon wheel, Jim Garrish type of pattern, okay? And how he's being grazed. But I just go out there with that bucket, grab a crap load of crap, <laughs> forgive the pun. Um, we get a bunch of poop. And then what I'll do, and I'm not gonna remove all this stuff, I'm just gonna take it and surface mount the poop right here on it. And the worms throughout the season, so the problem is the solution. Let's say you got too much poop going into place. Well, I don't give him dewormer, he gets none of that stuff. For his minerals and stuff, this time of year, he gets comfrey, whether it's dried comfrey, or he gets some of the high-end mineral we have. We take his manure, put it in a bucket, every once, or every other day I collect it or so, just dump it out here around my trees. Like I said, we've done it before. Whether it was chickens, it doesn't matter. We take that stuff as long as it's clean poop. Yes, there is such a thing. We'll just stick it out here. The soil's gonna do the rest for you. How cool is that? So somebody's gonna invariably ask, oh shoot, you covered up your comfrey over there, over there, over there. Well, by the time spring rolls back around again, it's right on the edges. That comfrey's gonna pop up through there. But we've made comfrey so ubiquitous out here, and you've seen me use it. When it's in the warmer months, I take that comfrey. You've seen me do it in the past. In the warmer months, I've taken that comfrey. I stuck it down first. Then I stuck the cardboard on top. I didn't use any of the manure because all that manure at that time of year was being used in the chicken tractor on steroids. So if you're thinking, well, shoot, I got no place for the manure. Yes, you do. This is why you don't want to do anything in isolation. Don't plant your trees in isolation. Right over there is a little bit of rosemary. Um, there's thyme over here, yarrow. This whole area will be pimped out with everything you can possibly imagine. Imagine, Which brings me right back to Subkoviak and why you ought to be checking out his stuff. I can't even begin to thank that man for all the wonderful things I've learned from him. And Lord willing, maybe one of these days I'll actually get to meet him in person. So if you can't train with these people in person, some of these online platforms are unbelievable and his are the best so y'all if you need anything from us whether it be the comfrey bone sauce like i said people are wondering why we're not using those um that hardware cloth anymore we're finding out that when we put bone sauce on all this stuff it appears i'm not going to make this claim perfect but it appears that even the voles don't even mess with it so we put the bone sauce on here. All those little guards around here so far can go away. If you need any bone sauce, any of that stuff, go check us out there. Anything we need, go check out the website. But more importantly, this video, I really want to give a shout out to one of my heroes in this space, Stefan Subkoviak. Check out his YouTube channel. If you have anything to do with trees, you will be glad you did. All right, y'all. Till next time, this is Billy from Perma Pastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. We'll see y'all next time.